Hello, my name is Karen Quiros and I am lucky enough to be the science resource teacher at the Chula Vista Elementary School District located at the Living Coast Discovery Center. The Living Coast is a small environmental education center located in South San Diego Bay. We have snakes, lizards, sharks, eagles, jellyfish, and more. I really miss having students come visit, but I'm so excited to be able to have my fantastic fish event for you today. If you have a favorite fish, this might be a great time to put that favorite fish into the question and answer section because our event today is titled Fantastic Fish. And we are going to become a special kind of scientist called an ichthyologist or a fish scientist that studies fish and we're going to look at the amazing world of these creatures. I have my friends Mr. Garcia and Mrs. Hughes helping me out today. So go ahead and put your favorite fish into the question and answer section and they'll be able to help me out with any questions that you have throughout the program and I'll be answering some as well. We also have an awesome Kahoot for you to play at the end. So stay tuned so we can check our knowledge then. So we are going to be studying fish, which means we're going to be ichthyologists. And so as ichthyologists today, we have two main objectives. We are going to describe the main characteristics of fish, and we're also going to look at a couple different types of fish and look at their main characteristics as well. If you have been following our live events, you know that we've been actually studying about different kinds of animals. And there are two main groups of animals, invertebrates, which do not have a backbone or a spine, and we studied a squid to learn about these amazing animals. And now we're starting our lessons on vertebrates. So we talked about birds last time, which was a group of vertebrates, and this time we're going to look at another group of vertebrates called fish, and they all have a backbone. There are 33,000 different types of fish, and this makes for a huge group of vertebrates. It's the largest group of vertebrates that there are, and there are going to be three main groups of fish that we're going to look at, and we're going to now play a little game to see a little bit about your fish knowledge. I'm going to show a picture like this of an animal and I want you to try and figure out if this is a fish or not a fish. So go ahead in that question and answer section. I want you to tell me yes or no. What do you think? Is this clownfish a fish? Go ahead and answer in that question and answer box. Yes or no. What do you think? If you put yes, woohoo, you're correct. Clownfish are a type of fish. That was kind of an easy one. It has fish kind of in the name, right? Now, let's try another one. How about this? This is a leopard shark. What do you think? Are leopard sharks a type of fish? Go ahead and put your answer into that question and answer section. Yes or no? What do you think? Are sharks types of fish? If you said yes, woohoo, you got it. Don't worry, some of these are really tricky and you are going to be an expert ichthyologist by the end of this experience. So some of these are kind of tricky, so don't worry, you're going to become an expert soon. Let's try another one. How about this? This is a sea anemone. What do you think? Are sea anemones a type of fish? Go ahead and put your answer yes or no into the section where you can answer questions and answers. If you said no, you're correct. Sea anemones are not a type of fish. They don't have a backbone, right? So they are a type of invertebrate. Let's try another one. Hmm, how about this one? This is an orca or a killer whale. Any thoughts? What do you think? Is this a type of fish? Yes or no? Go ahead and put your answer into the question and answer section. If you said no, that is correct. 
Killer whales are whales and whales are a type of mammal. They have to breathe air and come to the surface. Let's try one more. I told you these are kind of tricky. Here we go. What do you think? Is this a fish? What do you think? It's a seahorse. Hmm. Yes or no? Is it a fish? This one's probably the trickiest one that we have. If you said yes, wow, bonus points for you. If not, no worries. We're going to now look at what makes a fish a fish, and you're going to become an expert. So, uh, Mr. Garcia, this might be actually a good time for us to check in and maybe see if some of our viewers had some favorite fish, and maybe you could tell me how you think they did on that little fun game we played. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so, some of the... Favorite, favorite fishes favorite that we have happen to be sharks, clownfish, pufferfish, and also angelfish. Ooh, angelfish are beautiful. Clownfish are probably a pretty familiar one because of Finding Nemo, right? <laughs> exactly. And um, from the looks of some of the quizzes, a lot of the students looked like they were spot on. So I have a feeling they've either had a chance to visit the Living Coast sometime in the past or they've been paying attention to the previous uh, live events that we've been hosting. Maybe. Or I hope you guys can all come visit the Living Coast because we are ready to open as soon as it's safe for sure. Thank you, Mr. Garcia. Those so helpful to be able to know that you guys are out there and becoming ichthyologists already. So let's figure out what makes a fish a fish. So since there are so many different kinds, it can be kind of confusing, but there's a couple main traits that make fish fish. And that is, first of all, they all live in water. So some of them are gonna live in salt water, like the ocean. Some will live in fresh water, like lakes and streams. And some can actually even walk on land a little bit, which is pretty amazing. They also all have gills to breathe air and they breathe the same air that we do. They breathe in oxygen and they breathe out carbon dioxide just like us. However, they're in water, we're in air. So we have lungs that take the oxygen out of the air and they have gills that are able to take the oxygen out of the water. Many of the fish actually have little flaps over their gills and they open their mouth and they suck in the water and then they close those little flaps and that pushes the water over their gill. So they constantly have a cycle bringing oxygen into their bodies. Another main characteristic is that they are cold blooded. This means that they get their heat from their environment. There are a couple like some sharks, an opa, which is a type of fish and tuna, which are a little bit different. They aren't fully cold blooded, but most fish are cold blooded. Another really cool characteristic that fish have is that they have a lateral line on either side of their body. And this is an amazing feature, which I wish I had. It can feel vibrations in the water around them. So this is going to allow them to know exactly what's going on around them, even if it's dark and they can't see. Pretty cool characteristic, I think. And then finally, we learned that these are definitely vertebrates, right? And some of these fish have their vertebrae or spine made of bone, and others are actually made of cartilage, which we're gonna talk about in a moment. So there are three main types of fish. Bony fish are probably the fish that you normally think about. The fish that you usually, and this is 90 to 96% of all fish are bony fish. But then there's these crazy looking jawless fishes, which are actually pretty ancient. They're over 400 million years on Earth. They've been around and they don't have a jaw. <laughs> and then cartilaginous fish, which are sharks, stingrays and rays, are, are the third category of fish. So we're going to kind of go through and look at these three main types of fish. And I'm going to actually bring out some of our fishy friends here at the Living Coast for you guys to meet. And they will help us to be able to learn about these different kinds of fish. So remember, the first type of fish that we're going to talk about are bony fish. And they have all the same characteristics that I just talked about that all other fish do. But then there are similar characteristics that they have of their own. So I happen to have a mackerel fish here. 
And this macro fish isn't alive, but this is going to allow us to really look closely at some of its inside and outside parts. Scientists are usually going to dissect or look at fish up close so that we can understand them better and even potentially help them in the future. So I'm going to go ahead and share my mackerel screen here for you so that you can be able to see this awesome mackerel fish. All right, so if you look, you can definitely see that this mackerel has kind of an aerodynamic shape, which means it's going to be able to move really well through the water. And these bony fish all have fins. So you can see I can lift this fin up and I can kind of move it back and forth. This is one of its pectoral fins, which allows it to steer and to be able to move through the water that way. There's also this very large fin at the back here that can move back and forth as well, and that's going to move the fish forward. They have a dorsal fin right here that I can kind of pull up and have you guys see right here. And then they also have some fins like the anal and the pelvic fins down below. And these fins actually help the animal to stay kind of straight in the water and not do flip flops as they're swimming. Bony fish also have scales covering their whole body. You can see as I am moving my finger over this fish that it's very shiny and I can feel it's kind of a little bit hard. If I move it especially this direction, I can feel a bunch of kind of sharp little edges and those are their flat hard scales that are covering the body to protect them. Now, what do you think? Do fish have noses? <laughs> Maybe you've never thought about it before, but I'm going to go ahead and bring the fish up here and we're going to take a close look. What do you think? Do you see up close right here? There are actually two openings on either side right here, and those are actually the nostrils of the fish. So they're going to use these to be able to smell, but not breathe because their airway is not connected to their nose like ours is, but they definitely can sense and smell what's going on around them in the water. Now, another characteristic of these types of bony fish is that they have their vertebrae or their spine made of bone, not cartilage. And earlier today, I was actually able to go inside of a fish and I removed the spine. So if you check this out, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit here. And you can see that the spine is made of a bunch of different vertebrae. So each of these bumps is actually a vertebrae and they're hooked together. And then if I move it like this, you can actually see how that fish is going to be able to swim by those bones kind of supporting them. These are ribs that actually are support the structure of the uh, body of the mackerel also. So pretty interesting. That's definitely an important part of the fish is their spine and I have one other, actually I have two other ones that I want to show you. The first one is one that all fish have, except not the jawless fish and not the um, cartilaginous fish. This is an amazing structure. It looks very strange, but if you notice, it's like a little balloon. It's full of air. This is called the swim bladder. And Fish, bony fish have this because they need to be able to go up and down in the water. And what happens is they fill up this swim bladder with air and they rise to the top. And then when they go down, it's because they actually let the air out of this structure and they go back down. When you're looking at fish, you don't really see them struggling in the middle of the water, right? They're not sunk to the bottom and they're not at the top. They're just kind of floating in the middle, and that's because they have these swim bladders inside of them. I had a different fish and I removed their swim bladder also. So I can show you that this swim bladder right here is from a fish that was at the bottom of the water, and this swim bladder is from a fish that was at the top of the water. So pretty amazing to be able to see how they move up and down in the water. Now, we talked about some main characteristics of bony fish, but how about those gills? Remember the gills that we talked about that all fish have? I happen to have 
a pretty amazing structure. This is one of the gills of the fish and they have three main parts. These are the rakers and they make sure that food doesn't get over into this area. There's that middle part, which is the arch. And then they also have these filaments or what they're called. And this is where the oxygen actually goes into the fish. If you can put your hand out like this and then take your finger and trace your fingers like this. And then feel the back of your hand, feel the palm of your hand and then close your fingers. Now touch your hand. Are you touching more or less of your hand than before? What do you think? If you said less, that's correct because we're not able to touch inside of our fingers right now. So if you look at the gills, you see how there are many, many parts. And the more water that touches the gills, the more oxygen goes in. So this is called surface area. We can touch more of the parts if there's lots of many, many parts for the water to touch. So this is what's gonna help them to take as much oxygen out of the water as possible. Pretty awesome, right? Okay, so I'm gonna go back so we can do a quick review of our bony fish characteristics now. And here we are, right here. Okay, so our bony fish characteristics are that they have fins, they have hard flat scales, they have noses or nostrils to be able to smell, they also have their vertebrae made of bone, which we are able to see, and those swim bladders that move them up and down in the water. So let's go ahead and um, ask you another question. This is kind of cool. So people have studied fish and other animals and they've learned a lot and they've learned so much that they've actually made products and things that make our lives better that have been inspired by nature. This is called biomimicry. And I want you to think about now that you've learned a little bit about fish and some cool of their cool characteristics that they have and abilities, I want you to think about, is there something you, you have used that maybe you think was inspired by a fish or maybe something that you'd like to have, like one of those fish abilities, like being able to have a swim bladder, okay, or scales on your body? Is there something that you would like to create that would give you the abilities of a fish? I want you to go ahead and put those ideas into the question and answer section. Let me give you a couple examples. So there's a fish that actually lives in an area where there's a lot of piranha fish, which are really sharp teeth fish, right? And they are pretty deadly. So they have created this huge armor kind of around them. They have this really thick plates that protect their body. And the Navy actually studied these fish to figure out how to protect people. And they've made armor and armor for airplanes that is actually imitating the scales of this fish. There's another fish called a cling fish, and this one actually can hold on to rocks when there's a lot of waves, and people have made suction cups by studying this type of fish. So go ahead in that question and answer section, write some of your ideas. I can't wait to hear what you come up with. Anything that you would like to uh, create or that you might think have been inspired by a fish. And now we're going to move on to our second category of fish. You might be inspired by these also. These are our jawless fish. And the jawless fish, like lampreys and hagfish, are going to have some of the same characteristics as our other types of fish but they don't have any fins or scales. How crazy is that? And like I mentioned before, they're super ancient. They've been around for over 400 million years. They also don't have a jaw. This is what makes them called jawless fish, but they do have sharp teeth 
or tongues to help them scrape their food. And this is interesting. Their bodies, their backbone is made of cartilage instead of bone. So let's talk about cartilage a little bit. If you fold your ear forward like this and then you let go, it pops back into place, right? So that kind of flexible material in your ear is called cartilage. And so this gives our ear structure, but it's not super heavy, so our ears are hanging down. These animals that are jawless fish, they don't have any fins to kind of help them swim around. So this is lighter material, cartilage, to help them swim around, and they don't sink to the bottom with the heavy bone. So that cartilage um, backbone is really helpful. I happen to have a really cool video here for you to see about these fish because you might not know very much about them. So as you're watching this video, think about how they're similar and how they might be different from the bony fish that we just talked about. All right, pretty interesting fish, right? And there's another one that I haven't talked about yet called hagfish, and they have a pretty amazing adaptation. They can secrete mucus, like a bunch of snot-like stuff out of their bodies. And this helps them to get away from predators because it makes them super incredibly slippery. So maybe that's something that you might want to have uh, created also that you could cover yourself in slime to get out of a weird situation sometimes. There are hagfish that if you grab onto them, they can fill a five gallon bucket with mucus in just a couple of minutes. So pretty amazing adaptation. So these are some of the jawless fish characteristics. They don't have fins or scales. They're ancient. They have no jaw, but they have that sharp tooth or tongue, and they have vertebrae made of cartilage. Last category of fish are the cartilaginous fish. And I have a special friend from the Living Coast here to help us with these characteristics. And I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with a swell shark from the Living Coast now. Okay, let me go ahead and All right, so let me go ahead and move this camera so that you can see him a little bit better. All right, so here is a swell shark. And this swell shark is about two years old. These are nocturnal animals which sleep during the day and are awake at night. So, they are able to, right now, you'll notice that he, she's probably a little bit sleepy because she's kind of gone back to sleep right now. 
but we can talk about some of their main characteristics, which are their fixed fins. So if you look on either side right here, they have fins that are a little bit different shape than the, the bony fish's fins that we've talked about, right? So they're more fixed and this makes them kind of shaped like an airplane. So they have a very aerodynamic shape that can help them move through the water. Another really cool characteristic that these have, I'm gonna try and zoom in here and see if I can pull her back. This is actually their gill slit. So they don't have flaps like we do, but they do have slits on either side of their head, which is going to allow them to breathe. And these slits right here, this animal can actually move them back and forth to bring water over their gills. But there are some sharks that can't do this. They always have to keep moving. But if you look at this shark, you can definitely see that they are moving their uh, gill slits open and closed right here. Very cool. All right, so they have gills to breathe and those special gill slits. And then also, I'm gonna talk about their amazing scales. So if you look all over this body, you'll see there's amazing camouflage. But if I touch the shark from kind of head to tail like this, maybe I might wake her up a little bit. And she also is covered by these tooth-like scales called dermal denticles. And these are gonna actually help the animal to be protected, but they also make the animal swim super fast because it's almost like she has teeth all over her body to kind of hook in really well. And people have actually designed swimming suits that are very similar to shark skin. They've studied sharks and studied how they've been able to move through the water with their special dermal denticles. And they've been able to de determine how to build a swimming suit that's gonna really help those Olympic athletes travel fast. So you can see as she's moving around, you can see she has that really aerodynamic uh, shape to be able to move. They also have a backbone or spine made of cartilage as well, like the jawfish. So they aren't gonna be super heavy and sunk to the bottom. They're gonna actually be able to move really quickly through the water because they are lighter. And then finally, I'm sure that you have been able to know about sharks smelling blood in the water, right? I'm sure you heard that from Nemo also. They don't go crazy when they uh, find blood like that, but this does help them to find animals that are injured. So that makes for a pretty easy meal and gets them to the place where they can find easy food. So they have amazing senses. They also can hear really well. They're gonna hear sounds from far away. Uh, so they know exactly what's going on around them. And something else that is really amazing about sharks is that they can actually sense heartbeats of other animals in the water. So even if they can't see the animal, they can actually sense the heartbeat, which is going to be able to let them know where that animal is. So no animals are gonna be able to hide from this an uh, from a shark. So pretty awesome, I think. I'm so glad I was able to share this amazing swell shark with you today. And I hope that you will be able to come visit the Living Coast soon for uh, to be able to see these amazing animals close up for yourself. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch back to our uh, screen here so we can do a quick review of our cartilaginous fish and be able to see our Kahoot is coming up too. All right, so this is our review of our cartilaginous fish. So we have fixed fins, they have those gill slits that they can move, they have those tooth-like scales all over them, and they have their vertebrae made of cartilage as well as amazing senses. So, We've done it. We, as ichthyologists today, have looked at the main characteristics of fish, and we're able to see many different types of fish, including those three main categories. So it is time for us to learn how much you've learned today by playing a Kahoot. So remember, you need to be able to have two open windows. So not two tabs, but you have to be able to see my screen 
and a separate screen to so open a whole different window and go to kahoot.it and you can enter in this pin right here so that you can join our Kahoot game. So while I'm switching over, Mr. Garcia, can I hear some of those amazing um, thoughts about what they might like to create? Yeah, absolutely, Mrs. Quiroz. So I have uh, Zach here who said um, one of the biomimicry uh, devices was maybe create something like a scuba gear, um, but more advanced. And instead of snorkeling uh, a gill like a device that filters water for air and diving flippers for our hands too. So I thought that was pretty cool. That is super cool. Oh my goodness. Actually, I've gone scuba diving and we actually use a vest that kind of inflates like a swim bladder. So we actually have copied a fish. So that's a fantastic connection that you are already thinking that we could de uh, develop something. And I love flippers for hands. That's fantastic. Yeah, that one was really cool. And then we have another one from Kat. And uh, Kat said, I would like to make a type of clothing that works like an octopus, camouflage and texture change. Um, even though she said she knows that octopus aren't vertebrates. <laughs> they are invertebrates, but oh my goodness, I would definitely buy clothing that could change color and texture like the octopus can. Oh, that would be amazing. Yeah, and then we have uh, Crystal. Uh, Crystal said, if someone has back problems, they can use something to help them inspired, kind of like by the fish spines. Wow, I've never thought of that. That's incredible. I love that idea. They definitely could use some type of brace, right? To be able to kind of work like, be able to bend like that spine, but still be able to be strong. That's fantastic. Yeah, that was really cool. We still have a few more, and I know we had over 800 students, so I'm going to give it some time on the Kahoot till maybe we see that magic number of four, maybe even 500 students playing. So, um, oh my until... goodness. And it looks like <laughs> yeah. I forgot to click the um, button that <laughs> randoms their name. So we'll be able to hopefully have some good names today. <laughs> yeah, we'll make sure that we have students that are choosing appropriate names here. So, um, um, and then on top of that, we have Ever. Ever said this, I think some fish can camouflage. So Ever actually wants to find a way to humanly camouflage. Oh. So similar to the octopus idea, absolutely. Wouldn't that be amazing? I mean, and there are a lot of fish that actually are able to camouflage just with their coloring. And there's something we talked about maybe previously with an octopus, I think, is where they have kind of double camouflage, where the tops of their bodies are kind of dark and then the bottom of their body is light. So if an animal is looking down onto the fish, that dark body actually camouflages with the dark bottom of the ocean. And then if an animal's underneath them looking up, they're gonna see that light coloring blending in with the light sky. So that is, oh, I would love to have some type of camouflage too. And then we have, <laughs> we have another answer from um, our friends here at Heading Camp, Miss Rose's fourth grade class. They want to look at devices that specifically focus on breathing underwater. Oh, wow. What an amazing gift, right? When I am scuba diving, I am in the perfect world. I feel so at peace and it's amazing to be able to stay down there, but we can only stay down for a little bit. So if there was some type of breathing device that we could have that allowed us to just go into the water anytime and be able to stay down there as long as we could, like a fish, I would definitely buy that. <laughs> Absolutely. And then um, we do have a lot of answers about continuing to breathe underwater. Um, some P uh, of our students also brought up that pool floats were possibly inspired by biomimicry. Oh my goodness. I don't know if they were, but I would think that I'm uh, scientists definitely observe the swim bladders and fish to be able to design maybe the shape or how much they should, um, how big they should make them to allow them to float enough. I would say they probably studied fish to be able to do that. Yeah, That's a and then question. one more, because I think we're about to hit that 500 mark, so we're still waiting, but um, <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be amazing. It might be the biggest Kahoot yet that we've had. Oh, out of all so of our glad you all are here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have uh, Flores, and this one's actually really cool, especially for our military. It said, what about a submarine that could camouflage as any type of fish so we can see how all the different fish live in normal days and the routines? <gasps> Whoa, so it's like we're sneaking up on the fish, but we have to kind of act like a fish 
to be able to observe them, right? Because yeah, we have exactly. to count. Oh, I love that. That's fantastic. <laughs> Oh, these are great ideas. I'm so impressed. You are all amazing ichthyologists, and I know that I'm going to even, there's so many more ideas out there, and you are going to get out there and develop them and, and inspire us all. All right. Well, I think we hit the magic number of 500, so I think we should go ahead and get started. All right. Thank you guys all for hanging in there. We'll go ahead and push start now. Here we go. Fantastic fish. Ready for the kahoot in three, two, one. Here we go. What is a scientist that studies fish called? You know what? I forgot to do the time on this for longer than just a little bit. Should we start over? You know what? That might be a great idea. That is totally cool. And um, while Let's. I would actually suggest that. Let's do that for our, Let's our, do our that. friends. Um, yeah. Um, but that is going to mean that we're going to need to get everyone to sign in again. That's totally cool. We'll do a new okay. pin. We have okay. plenty we'll of things to still pin. talk I'm about. I'm so oh. sorry, friends. I'm going to go ahead and give you a new pin, okay? Here we go. I'm going to put it up right now so everyone can rejoin. I apologize. And while they do that, if you don't mind, um, you go ahead and do that. But I'm going to go ahead and just add a few things. Um, some of the things that I, I've been researching, uh, as I'm also watching what you're talking about, is yeah. I was looking at how muscles um, gave the idea for adhesives. So if you kind of think of like glue and anything that's sticky, um, if anyone here has had maybe clams or oysters, I'm kind of thinking, you know, in that family, you're kind of looking at sometimes they're really sticky substances that allows them to stay shut or stick to walls, so um, uh, that was really cool. Absolutely. That is a great comment, definitely. They have many, many types of adhesives that are definitely going to be um, modeled after muscles, for sure. And then the other one I was thinking of is um, cod, um, and um, what's it called? They do the, uh, the antifreeze in the blood yes. banks. So, do you know any more about that? I don't. I just know that they actually were able to do antifreeze, which means that there's um, like when in our pipes, when it gets really, really cold, like what's happening in Texas right now, they have to put a fluid into the pipes and into our cars so that they don't freeze. So this is going to be really important. And they studied and learned that from a fish so that when they're in really cold water, their blood doesn't freeze. Absolutely. All right, we have our new pin and I so apologize. Can everyone please go ahead and join our new Kahoot game? I apologize again, but this time we're going to play, I promise, and it is going to be 629-8461. Expert leverage in. Yay. All right. We've got some people. All joining. right. Yay. Thank you so much for hanging in there, friends. We're going to get this done today. <laughs> So for this one, we may have to wait and maybe see if we can get around the 350 mark. I, I think will that's be, probably a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully we'll get up to that 500 mark again. But I totally understand that I'm. I know we had to to switch it over in the middle of it there. But wow, hey, they're coming in so fast right now. So you guys cool. are so awesome. <laughs> Thank so you I'm for bringing in there. There's one more question I do have, and a lot of students are asking this in the chat, and I know you're an expert at it. And the reason why is because we had a chance to spend a few weeks talking about it. And that is, would you be able to define a little bit more of what biomimicry is? Just the definition of biomimicry itself. Oh, it is such a fascinating field. So nature all around us, like plants and animals, have just amazing abilities, especially like insects. And so what people do and scientists do is they just observe. They immerse themselves in nature. They just go sit and observe and closely watch these animals and study them and look at their parts and find out their behaviors. And they're able to then take those ideas from nature and create something that we can use and make our lives better. So it's a pretty fascinating field and uh, one that I would love to actually get deeper into for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I keep thinking of the whole ideas of biomimicry and then just thinking of a lot of the creative writing that's taken place throughout the years of looking at different um, 
comic book characters that exist out there and just how many things have uh, uh, been adapted because of plants and because of animals um, in itself. So that's really cool. Uh, so cool. It just, it's just it's amazing because you get to just dream up, right? You take something that's pretty magical right away and then you get to just imagine and dream up your own, uh, create use your own creativity to create a product. So I think it's pretty a fascinating field for sure. All right, so it looks like we're past that 350 mark and we are now getting close to 400. So um, I just want to remind our viewers here that at any given point in time, the um, pin number will always be on the bottom part of the game. So if for some reason they're like, I can't log in or got kicked out, it's so easy just to go back to Kahoot.it and reinsert that pin number and they'll be right back in the game. I'm so sorry, friends. Thank you so much for hanging in. Wow, 400 of you guys are back. Oh, thank you so, so much. I hope everyone can join that we're just joining before. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start. Is that right? Should we go for it? Let's do it. OK, here we go. And you already got a sneak peek at that first question. So everyone should be able to answer that one pretty quick, actually. <laughs> here we go. Fantastic fish in three, two, and one. Here we go. What is a scientist that studies fish called? Is it red triangle botanist, blue diamond ichthyologist, yellow circle archaeologist, or green square ornithologist? What is a scientist that studies fish called? Hmm. Red is botanist, blue is ichthyologist, yellow is archaeologist, and green is ornithologist. Notice they all end in ist, or ology is usually the study of, and ist is someone who studies something. So botanist is red, blue is ichthyologist, yellow is archaeologist, and green is ornithologist. Get those answers in, only about five more seconds. And here we go. Let's see how you did. Yes, excellent. 300, over 300 of you said ichthyologist. You rock. Absolutely. That is definitely the name of a fish scientist. So adorable jaguar, majestic lion, social swan, mountain alpaca, and stellar egret. You guys are rocking it. Keep it up. Here we go. Next question. Which group of fish has the most kinds of fish in it? Remember, there were those three groups. So which of those three groups has the most type of fish? Most fish are in this group. So red triangle is bony fish. Blue diamond is jawless fish. Yellow circle is cartilaginous fish. And green square is mackerel fish. So remember, there's three main categories, three main groups of fish. So which one is the one that has the most types of fish in it? Red triangle is bony fish. Blue diamond is jawless fish. Yellow circle is cartilaginous fish. And green square is mackerel fish. Almost 10 seconds left. Get those answers in. Red triangle bony fish. Blue diamond jawless fish. Yellow circle cartilaginous fish. And green square mackerel fish. Here we go. Woohoo! Bony fish is correct. There are many, many types of bony fish. Let's see how you did. Ooh, adorable jaguar hanging in there. Well done. Funny tiger, swift gazelle, cheerful mouse, and tropical goat. Well done. Here we go. And glowing lemur. You just climbed a bunch, so keep it in there. Here we go. Next question. Which group of ancient fish have no scales or fins? So remember, there's those three type of fish. Bony fish is red triangle. Blue diamond is jawless fish. Yellow circle is cartilaginous fish. And green square is mackerel fish. So which group of ancient fish have no scales or fins? So remember, there's those three main categories. Which one were the ancient fish that don't have any scales or fins? Red triangle bony fish, blue diamond jawless fish, yellow circle cartilaginous fish, 
or green square mackerel fish. Go ahead and put your answer in 10 more seconds. Let's see how you did with this one. These were those kind of crazy looking fish that we didn't really know much about. Yes, well done. Jawless fish is correct. That was the category of those super ancient, almost worm-like looking fish. Radiant Newt takes the lead. Swift Rhino, Proud Rabbit, Rabbit, Rapid Elephant, Tropical Goat, and Great Sphinx. You moved up big time that time too. Well done, here we go. Next question. Which group of fish have tooth-like scales and excellent senses? Hmm, which one was the one of those three main categories that had those tooth-like scales all over their body and really good senses? So red triangle's bony fish, blue diamond is jawless fish, yellow circle is cartilaginous fish, and green square is mackerel fish. Which group of fish have tooth-like scales and super senses? Remember, these ones actually can sense a heartbeat in an animal around them, even if it's hiding. So is it red triangle bony fish, blue diamond jawless fish, yellow circle cartilaginous fish, or green square mackerel fish? Get your answers in. Only five seconds left. Ooh, that was a close one, but yes, absolutely good. Cartilaginous fish is correct. Those sharks have those amazing senses. Let's see our leaderboard now. Bold Bunny takes the lead. Proud Rabbit, Rapid Elephant still hanging in there. Stellar Egret and Tropical Goat hanging in there also. Here we go. Next question. Last one. Is this a fish? <laughs> Remember our first kind of game that we played? This kind of goes along with it. So just two options for this one. Is this a fish? What do you think? Yes, red triangle or no blue diamond? This is a sea star or starfish. Is it a fish? Kind of tricky. Yes, red triangle or no blue diamond? What do you think? Get those answers in. Look at how pretty this one is. We are talking about camouflage. This one's definitely not camouflage. This one stands out. So maybe it's poisonous or maybe doesn't taste good to other animals as a warning. But what do you think? Is it a fish? Yes or no? Get those answers in. Five seconds. Red is yes, blue is no. Ho, 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 that was close. Guess what? It's not a fish. How confusing, right? Because starfish is in the name. So that's why we have to say sea stars instead of starfish, because they're not fish. They're invertebrates. They don't actually have a backbone. That was a tricky one. All right, let's see how we did here on our podium. With our third place, five out of five was Proud Rabbit. Woohoo! And five out of five with 4,000 points was Classy Rhino. And our first place winner is Kind Iguana. Pulled in out of nowhere. And the runners up were Rapid Elephant and Expert Leopard. Thank you guys so much for being able to join that. Let's go back. I have more information for you. And I want you to know that we have some other videos. If you are enjoying the animals, you definitely are going to want to see our amazing creature close-ups with Mrs. Q. And we are going to be able to, here we go. In the chat, we're putting our YouTube channel which is our innovation uh, YouTube channel. And we would love for you to subscribe. And on there, we have all of these live events that have been recorded. We also have amazing resources for you. And we have those creature close-ups with Mrs. Q, which are videos that I made with our amazing ambassadors at the Living Coast Discovery Center. And also next week, don't forget to join. 
We have Mr. Garcia who is helping us out today. He is going to be leading an amazing experience where he's going to have you go through and develop engineering a mobile device speaker. So that's next Friday, February 26th at 1 p.m. So make sure you join in. Thank you so much for joining me today and hang in there. I am so excited to be able to teach you in this amazing world of fish.